I am what many would call a misanthrope. I detest mankind to the fullest degree. It is no surprise that they chose me. They saw embodied in me every tenet of their inhuman ideology, every facet of their specidial mission. I've been thinking dark thoughts when they visited me, routine ruminations on man's demise, and upon seeing them I at first thought that somehow mankind had in a matter of hours wickedly evolved into some worse, fouler form. When the three of them climbed from my window, naked and only fundamentally humanoid, I watched with a sort of morbid fascination. Their movements were live, suggestive of a stealthy grace, despite their outwardly unwholesome appearance. There was nothing hostile about their approach. They entered my room quietly, and though they were trespassing, I felt perfectly safe, as if they were instead old friends stopping by to chat. They were virtually indistinguishable from one another, save minor variations in physique, one slightly broader in the chest, and others posture a bit more hunched than the others. Their faces were hideous, like old men's, with oddly primal physiognomies, despite the bloated craniums, which I naturally regarded as an indicator of high intelligence. The way their sallow eyes seemed to observe and analyse their human surroundings supported this observation of intelligence, or at least a low cunning. Their grey and signally vascular skin seemed to absorb and softly reflect the light of my room, in some incredible bioluminescent process. This radiative quality unnerved me deeply, recalled to my memory some historically forgotten predator of the ancient deeps. The genetic memories inherited from my precursors conjured within my mind vague images of hulking marine life that at once lurked in the depths of festering, primordial seas, and whose many tentacled bodies had potentially exhibited the same eerie bioluminescence for some unknowable yet assuredly sinister purpose. I struggled internally to stifle a flaring terror as the radiation intensified with each second. So as to not appear frightened, I turned my attention from them to my computer, where I'd been working, prior to their unsanctioned entrance. Seeing me ostensibly relaxed, they crept closer and spoke. Their speech was akin to some animal chittering, though the words themselves, the genocidal ranting, were turgid, yet another point of evidence for their high intellectual capacity. I listened, morbidly and frowned, and had to resist the urge to clap at the end of the anti-human oration. My horror of their monstrous appearance was not stamped out, but made easier to subdue by their surprisingly comprehensible mode of communication. They asked my thoughts, and ultimately, my cooperation, and I happily gave them the former. I commiserated with the sentiment, applauded the idea, and admitted to finding no fault in the plan. I will repeat none of it here. Well, only say that if I had complied, if I had offered them my wholehearted support, you would not be reading this. Humanity would not be here today. I denied them my assistance, resisted their pleadings, declined their offers of high status among their kind, an additional gift beyond the basic joy of seeing mankind annihilated, because of one reason. My hatred for humanity had nothing to do with mankind itself. My qualms are not with the genetic lineage of the proto-hominid, I don't hate clothes wearing bipedal mammalians for that sake alone. My issue is with all of higher civilization, all sapient life forms. You see, I am not a human. I'm an ape who has been given and am now continuously permanently tortured with human intellect by a human being whose irrepressible scientific curiosities led him to abduct me from my home three years ago and through days and weeks of nightmarish experimentation endow curse me with higher cognition, the related ability of speech and, unintentionally, hatred. My room, though spacious, well lit and filled with books, gadgets and all sorts of trinkets, is nonetheless a cage, devoid of those things to which I've been accustomed since birth. Vegetation, both the low foliage and towering trees, a clear beautiful sky and, most importantly, family. I had a mate, a child, loyal friends or respected rivals. To humans, or perhaps to just my contemptible jailer, this abysmally sterile enclosure with its screens and terminals and stations is some kind of twisted paradise. Its utter artificiality is intolerable, and yet I must do just that. So as much as it would please me to see mankind destroyed, I know my hatred would not be sated. Assured as I was by those execrable emissaries that another species of even greater intelligence would replace mankind, 
So using the primal strength of my kind, which was not, surprisingly, taken from me following the boost of my intellect, I seized those abominable extraterrestrials and ripped them limb from awkwardly jointed limb. Their cries of agony were, to my surprise, quite human. Their green blood and multiform organs were not. I will not be satisfied with the death of man, not unless in destroying them. I destroy all sapient beings, myself included. Civilization is a disease. Its cure. A regiment of fresh, untainted air. Plump, juicy fruits. And rest beneath the beautiful blue gulf of an unclouded sky. I wish, more than anything, to gain that. To return to that. <laughs> <laughs>